Good day everybody. How are you all doing? Hey, you want to listen to a joke about a statistician? Why did the statistician statistician start a band? Because he had a mean sense of rhythm. And why did the statistician join a circus? Because he wanted to juggle with probability distribution. Yay, clap. So, let's get serious. Let's talk something about something more serious. So, how to do last time we were talking about how to conduct a hypothesis test about the population and I told you that we do not know the population because it's too large population is too large so we work with a simple random sample we make an educated guess about the population mean age for example if you are doing a population mean age you make an educated guess about the population in age. First comes a null hypothesis. And then depending on the problem statement comes the alternate hypothesis. Key thing to remember, hypothesis testing always come in pair of hypothesis. Null hypothesis is H sub 0, is the status quo. And the alternate hypothesis varies from problem to problem depending on the problem state. I also mentioned to you, and this is a key thing, please note that the null hypothesis is equal, equivalent to a defendant in a jury-based trial system. At the beginning, at the start of the trial, we hypothesize or we assume that the defendant is innocent. So the null hypothesis, the defendant is innocent. And the alternate hypothesis in that case, the defendant is not innocent. Okay, so let me share my screen with you. So, last time we were talking about a null hypothesis. H sub zero null hypothesis. Remember, H sub zero is the null hypothesis. Is mu equal to 22? The mean age is 22. And our alternate, which is different from, this is the alternate, or some people call it alternative hypothesis, is mu not equal to 22. Just to remind you, we'll collect enough evidence from the sample data to determine whether we can support the alternate hypothesis. Okay, Then we will reject the null hypothesis or the status quo. If I remember correctly, and just to remind you, the sample mean x bar, remember this is sample mean, from our simple random sample is equal to, I believe it was 21. And the sample size, N is the sample size, is, was 36. And the population standard deviation, this is population standard deviation. is given to us as one. So this is the standard deviation of the ages. What does it mean? It is an average variation from the population mean age. That's standard deviation. Okay. So we can, at this point, we can compare the sample mean with the hypothesized value in the null hypothesis. The value in the null hypothesis is 22. So we can write um, the difference between sample mean, between sample mean, between the sample mean and the value in the null hypothesis and the value in the null hypothesis
is x bar minus mu zero. Mu zero, the zero refers to the value in the null hypothesis. Okay, so this is equal to my x bar is 21. My value in the null hypothesis is 22. Okay, maybe I should write here that this is the value in the null hypothesis mu sub zero. And that is equal to over here, minus one. But what do I do with the difference? Is it reasonable? Is the difference reasonable? Is the sample mean close enough to the value in the null hypothesis? I just do not know. Is minus one. That means I'm going to discuss how far the difference between the sample mean and the population value in the null hypothesis is acceptable. How much of a difference between the sample mean and the value in the null hypothesis is acceptable. So the best way to do that is to, is to calculate a z-score. So just to remind you, let me change the color of my pen. Okay, so uh, I'll just talk about the z-score. So z-score, if you remember, this is the standard normal score. St standard normal score is given by, is equal to, or z is equal to x, it's a value in the population. How far it is away from the mean of the population? That is the difference we have calculated. We divided by the standard deviation of the population. Now, if I'm comparing, if I am comparing X bar, that is a sample mean, to value in the null hypothesis for sigma I should use the standard deviation of the probability distribution of the probability distribution distribution of x bar, not sigma of x bar. This is sometimes called, in statistics textbook, you will find this is called the sampling distribution. And the probability distribution, let me move this a little bit up. So the standard deviation of sampling distribution is given as is x bar is sorry is sigma x bar. Because it's the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar, not x. That's why we take the symbol sigma x bar. Subscript is x bar, which is the sample mean. Okay. And we are talking about the <coughs> probability distribution of the sample means. And that is given by central limit theorem is sigma divided by square root of n. So in this sample, in the sample that we have collected, we have collected n is 36 and uh, we are given, given, and it is given. No. And And 
n is 36 uh, and sigma is 1 remember sigma is 1 so let me erase this just to get rid of any confusion okay so let's get back to our calculation for sigma x bar which is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution so sigma x bar then becomes equal to 1 divided by square root of 36 or it is 1 divided by 1 6 or 1 out of 6 and we can quickly use our calculator this is the calculator I'm using ti 84 is 1 divided by 36 sorry 1 divided by 6 is 0.167 rounded to three places of decimal is 0 0.167 so this is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution sometimes also called sampling error of the sampling distribution or standard error what exactly it is it is an average variation from the mean now in a sampling distribution the mean is the mean of the population so the average variation from the mean which is sigma x bar is sigma divided by square root of n hence it is also called standard error that means the average variation from the mean of the population of the sample means okay so here then let's calculate uh, let me move it up okay and let me use the add of this okay so remember the z score we are going to calculate so why don't i give you some time to think about how to calculate the z score from here remember we are comparing the sample mean to the value in the null hypothesis that's what in the numerator and then we have to calculate the standard normal score standard normal score means the difference in the numerator x bar minus mu zero has to be divided by the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar think for a minute what's going to happen i'm not going to carry all the calculation in this uh, video i will talk next time about how to proceed with that calculation and what to do with that information what to do with that information after uh, calculating the standard normal score so hang in tight. I'll be back next time with more explanation of how to complete this hypothesis test. I know it's a new concept for you. So I want to spend more time in details explaining how to do it. Okay. Take care. And uh, if you like this video, please give me thumbs up. I appreciate that. If you like this video, share with your friends. And please subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it that you see my watch my videos and try to learn from there so please subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button and do not forget to click on the bell button because that will notify you every time i upload a new video thanks for watching take care and see you next time do not forget to watch me tomorrow then see you bye bye